you want to know the differences between the 4790K, the 6700K and the 7700K, stick around as this video is going to tell you the main differences between them as well as the performance numbers in both synthetic and in real world gaming applications. So of course the 4790K is a refresh or has well refresh of the 4770K. I believe the main reason that they did this and released the Devil's Canyon CPUs at all was because the 4770K had absolutely terrible uh, TIM or thermal interface material. That's the sort of thermal paste that sits in between the actual chip itself and the metal heat spreader that you'll see on the top. There were some mild improvements as well, which is quite nice. And obviously temperature wise, it's quite a stable chip. You're easily running at 60 to 70 degrees on the full load with a you know 120 millimeter cooler or uh, you know just general uh, air heat sink. So that's a pretty good chip. It performs pretty well. And as you'll see in the actual performance numbers, it really isn't that much different between the uh, you know the current generation 7700K, uh, even the 6700K, and that chip itself. That chip runs on the Z90. Platform and it's a couple years old. It's obviously using the Socket 1151 LGA platform or Land Grid Array if you're interested. And basically, it's a pretty you know decent chip. If you still got one, I really wouldn't recommend upgrading at this point unless you're desperate to be watching 4K Netflix. In terms of overclocking, all of these chips are K-SKU chips, which means they're very easy to overclock. And obviously, if they're running on the Z series, so the Z97, Z170, and Z270 chipsets, then all of them can be very very easily overclocked and the 4790K is no exception. In terms of performance, the 6700K is not a massive leap above the 4790K as you'll see in just a second and if you have a 4790K, unless you're desperate to use USB Type-C or Thunderbolt uh, 3 or you know maybe a, a Samsung 960 NVMe SSD uh, then I really wouldn't recommend any sort of upgrade. I think X99 is probably the, your next point if you really want to upgrade, or of course wait around for Ryzen in the next couple of months. There are a few mild architecture changes. Of course, the 6700K uses the Skylake architecture over uh, Devil's Canyon or Haswell uh, refresh as it's known. And basically, uh, there's, there's a few sort of video decoding uh, improvements. It's also a chip that runs a little bit cooler and a little bit more power efficient, which is really nice. But overall, it's as I said, not a massive difference. Of course, with the Kabylake CPUs that we've just seen come out with the 7700K, there really isn't a massive difference here. You do get slightly enhanced video playback, yeah, so for the, I believe, the VP9 codec, which is uh, Google's codec, and also if you want to use HDCP 2.2 to be able to watch 4K Netflix and that sort of thing, you need a Kaby Lake CPU for that, which is kind of a shame. I'd like to see that perhaps as, you know, a, a, a software update or something. I understand that Kaby Lake has that on a hardware level as opposed to what Skylake has, but but at the same time, obviously, it would be nice to see that sort of backwards compatibility. And either way, uh, the, the main difference is, as I said, besides a slight clock speed bump from 4 GHz with a boost to 4.2, now being the standard clock being 4.2 with a boost to 4.5, there really isn't that much of a difference. It's also quite widely reported that the thermal interface material in the uh, 7700K is actually not that great. Uh, and if you actually you know, delid the CPU, which is quite a dangerous thing, and I don't recommend it, uh, and change the thermal interface material, then you actually get a, a significant temperature decrease uh, that's being reported between sort of 10 and 30 degrees at 5 gigahertz. So that's a fair margin for uh, improvement. So I think that's enough of me talking. Let's have a look at the performance numbers. As you can see, I've included the 7700K overclocking results here. This is running at 4.9 gigahertz. And if you overclock the 6700K to the same frequency, you get pretty much identical numbers. If you overclock clock the 4790K to the same frequency, you'll likely get fairly similar results, likely very similar to the results you can see of the stock frequencies, where it's slightly lower, although especially in the real world numbers, it's not a massive difference. Thank you.
So as you can see, the performance difference isn't that massive. Of course, there are a few other considerations to take into account. Obviously, the features that are available on the newer platforms like M.2, U.2, and all that sort of stuff. And of course, USB Type-C, 3.1 and 3.1 Gen 2 as well. And obviously, on the Z270 platform, you've got the new 3.1 Gen 2 front panel headers too. So when cases start supporting that, that's a nice feature to have. But uh, in terms of performance, if you already own one of these chips, I highly recommend that you just overclock the chip or you know overclock it a bit more if you haven't already um, it's my my personal preference for that is spending the extra money to be able to get a chip that's almost identical in performance just doesn't seem worth your time really so what's my verdict on which chip to buy at this point in time if you don't own one of these yet well personally my uh, my consideration will go to the 6700k at this specific point in time Prices should be dropped due to obviously the 7700K being released, but of course as time goes on and if you're watching this in a few months or even six or eight months or whatever's time, then the price of the 6700K will definitely be higher than the 7700K, at which point it's worth just getting that one. The 4790K, unless you can get a good deal on a new one or something like that that's still in its box or something, then I'd personally recommend going for the 6700K at this point in time, and then obviously once the 6700K case prices go up because they're not being manufactured as much anymore, the 7700K will be the better shout. Although of course you do have to bear in mind that the Ryzen CPUs are fairly close around the corner, so it's going to be a very interesting thing to see once those prices are released and of course once the chips are actually available too. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative. If you did feel free to subscribe, like and leave a comment down below let me know what you thought. And of course feel free to share the video too on Reddit or Facebook or Twitter or tech forums or just with anyone you think might be interested in it and of course if you want to help me out a little bit more feel free to use the Amazon or Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below it genuinely does help me out keeps the channel running and all that sort of stuff and making these videos so please do use those if you can and otherwise uh, yeah that's pretty much it do check out some of the other videos I did this week and last week on uh, specifically how to manufacture a CPU and design it and all that sort of stuff uh, and why Intel and AMD have no competition that's a very interesting one that I highly recommend you check out and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.